Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this Monday again for our weekly sanctions and export controls update. And as you might have expected already, we will focus on the new round of Russia sanctions that have been in, enforced uh, last Friday and Saturday uh, by the US, the UK and the EU. I must apologize in advance. I will go through a couple of slides in 15 minutes and I will not get too much into detail to keep it short and light, but I would love to share the links with you to, to these updates. So maybe I will just share the links with you on LinkedIn um, after this broadcast. So today's agenda for, for the broadcast are the new sanctions against Russia by the US, the UK and the EU. So let's begin with the US sanctions first and a couple of export control updates as well. Last Friday, the 24th of February, Commerce BIS imposed additional export restrictions on Russia and Belarus. BIS introduced a new rule entitled Implementation of Additional Sanctions Against Russia and Belarus under the EAR and Refinements to Existing Controls. Please visit the Federal Register publication of last Friday for a complete overview of what this rule entails. I will share the link after the broadcast. This rule revises the EAR to enhance the existing sanctions against Russia and Belarus by expanding the scope of the Russian and Belarusian industry sector restrictions, including restrictions on the oil and gas production, commercial and industrial items, chemical and biological precursors, and luxury goods sanctions. To better align those restrictions with the controls that have been implemented by the US allies and partners imposing similar controls on Russia and Belarus. That was the update by Commerce BIS. On the same day, we've seen also an update by OFAC. On the 24th of February, OFAC issued a determination to allow sanctions on individuals and entities operating in the Russian metals and mining sector basically expanding the reach of persons OFAC can sanction. OFAC issued determination, det the determination allowing for sanctions to be imposed on any individual entity determined to operate or have operated in the Russian metals and mining sector. Using this determination, OFAC sanctioned four entities. Let's move on to the next OFAC update which was OFAC designated 11 Russian banks, more individuals and entities. To summarize those designations, let's look at this overview here. The designations included 11 Russian banks, including the Credit Bank of Moscow, Lanta Bank and MTS Bank and three financial institutions, several Russian wealth management related entities, the designations targeted Russian sanctions evasion by targeting certain persons and entities that have been designated for circumvention, notably all of them, of them non-Russian. OFAC sanctioned Nur Murad Kurabnov, an arms dealer supporting Russia and Belarus, Russian businessman Alexander Yevgenevich Udo, Udodov, and several companies linked to him, designated for operating and having operated in the management consulting sector of the Russian economy. And OFAC targeted Russia's military supply chains, several entities that produce carbon fiber and related advanced materials, entities that operate in Russia's aerospace sector, entities that operate in Russia's technology and electronic sectors have also been designated. In relation to these designations, OFAC also issued new general licenses and FAQs. Also here, I advise you to click on the link that I will provide after for a more detailed overview of these designations. Still staying with the US, we've seen an update by the Office of the United States Trade Representative, the USTR. The USTR imposed higher tariffs on certain metal and metal products, chemicals and minerals on Russia including additional tariff, tariff increases on a variety of goods from Russia worth approximately $2.8 billion, raised tariffs, 
on most metal and metal products, doubling them from 35 to 70 percent. Increased tariffs on additional Russian products to 35 percent, including chemicals and minerals and tar tariff increases on Russian aluminium. Now let's move on to the UK sanctions overview, which I summarized in only one slide. Also, as with the US last Friday on the 24th of February, the UK Office of Financial Sanctions Implementation of C imposed more Russia sanctions, including an export ban on every item Ukraine has found Russia using on the battlefield until to date, including aircraft parts, radio equipment and electronic components that can be used by the Russian military industrial complex, including in the production of UAVs unmanned aerial vehicles. An import ban on 140 goods, including iron and steel products processed in third countries. Existing measures against Crimea and non-government controlled territory in Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts have been extended to target Russian controlled areas, namely Kherson and Zaporizhia, Zapor my apologies. I didn't practice pronouncing this before, restricting their access to UK trade and finance. And last but not least, also a lot of new designations. 92 entries have been added to the UK's Russia regime, including four Russian banks, as well as persons linked to Gazprom, the defense company Rostec, the state-owned nuclear power company Rostatom, and the CEO of Nord Stream 2. Now let's move on to the EU sanctions. To make it simple, I basically took the publication of the EU Commission, which some of you might have seen already on LinkedIn. It's a really nice infographic that summarizes the sanctions, the 10th round of sanctions of the EU on Russia. And it's a bit hard to read, I have to admit, but I'll just read it out to you. So this is the first out of three slides on EU sanctions against Russia. Also on Friday, I believe on Saturday, <clears throat> the EU published a press release announcing these new sanctions. Let's begin with the listing of new people and entities. About 120 additional individuals and entities have been added, covering Russian officials and military leaders complicit in the war, the army of propagandists, and key figures involved in the kidnapping of Ukrainian children. Then a couple of updates concerning new export bans, including on sensitive dual use and advanced technologies such as drones, missiles, helicopters, or other vehicles, as well as specific rare earths and thermal cameras with military applications. Export bans on 96 entities associated with Russia's military industrial complex, entities associated with Kremlin controlled Wagner, the Wagner paramilitary organization, and seven Iranian entities that have been using EU components and providing Russia with military Shahed drones. And another export update, also export bans on goods that can be redirected to support the Russian war effort, including vehicles such as heavy trucks, semi-trailers, snowmobiles, goods easily directed to military such as electric generators, binoculars, radars and compass, construction goods such as bridges, forklifts, trucks, cranes, and goods used in the aviation industry, such as turbojets. Now let's move on to the second slide of EU sanctions. Still staying with export bans and then moving on to an import ban and financial sanctions. So export bans on goods critical for the Russian industrial capacity, such as electronics, machine parts, pumps, machinery for working metals, and complete industrial plants worth 11.4 billion. Then we have a new import ban on Russian high revenue goods, including bitumen and related materials like asphalt and synthetic rubber and carbon blacks. Also worth 1.3 billion. Sanctions against the financial sector. Three Russian banks have been added to the list of entities subject to an asset freeze and the prohibition to make funds and economic resources available. As you can see here, we saw in the OFAC update that OFAC sanctioned 11 Russian banks 
and then we've seen that the UK sanctioned, let me check again. Um, four Russian banks, and now we see that the EU sanctioned three Russian banks. Now, this is not surprising because there has been a difference in the amount of banks that have been sanctioned so far in the previous round of sanctions. But now we see a closer alignment between those countries uh, when it comes to sanctioning those Russian banks. Then we have two Russian media outlets including RT Arabic and Sputnik Arabic that have been added to the media ban under EU sanctions. And then moving on to the last overview of EU sanctions, just two more. New reporting obligations on Russian central bank assets. This is especially important regarding the possible use of public Russian assets to fund the reconstruction of Ukraine after Russia is defeated. And anti-circumvention measures, including reporting obligations on frozen assets, including for dealings before listings and assets which should be frozen. Private flights between the EU and Russia directly over third countries should be notified in advance and a prohibition to transit dual use goods and firearms via the territory of Russia to third countries. I know this has been a rather dry overview of the sanctions that have been imposed last Friday but I couldn't summarize it any better than this in 15 minutes. So if you would like to look deeper into those sanctions measures, I will share the links with you in a minute. Uh, usually we would now receive a couple of questions from the audience. So let me just briefly give you a minute and see if you have any questions. You can post your questions on LinkedIn and then I will receive them and try to answer them. <clears throat> on another note, I wanted to include another update which I've seen this morning, which was the exclusion of Russia from the FATF, the Financial Action Task Force. But I didn't want to discuss that in detail and just focus on the sanctions measures themselves. Just for your interest, if you want to learn more about this, FATF published a statement on Russia's exclusion. Thank you very much for joining us today. And good luck this week with the new implementation of the sanctions. I'm sure we will all have a busy day or a couple of busy days ahead of ahead of us, making sure that these sanctions are correctly uh, implemented and uh, we are all complying. So good luck and we hope to see you next, next Monday. And last but not least, for those of you who are interested, we have a global sanctions and export control conference in Europe, in Amsterdam, on the 11th and the 12th of May. So if you would like to come and see us in person, please visit our website for more information on our European conference on global sanctions and export controls in Amsterdam. Hope to see you there. And please join us next Monday for our next broadcast. For those of you who are ACSS members, and also those of you who are not ACSS members, we actually have one webinar that is for free on the 18th of May with Polestar. But we also have two webinars before that for ACSS members only, namely on the 6th of April, sanctions risks for the insurance industry. On the 20th of April, preventing and detecting circumvention of EU trade restrictions by third countries. And on the 18th of May, a free webinar for everyone with Polestar entitled Maritime Trade Sanctions Compliance Facts, Facts versus Fiction. So please visit our website and register for these webinars. Hope to see you there as well. Have a good week, everyone. Thank you for joining.